What an incredibly glum day. Welcome to another piano book. I think it's time for a, a wintry piano. For those of you who don't know what this is all about, if you link above to that film, it's a kind of a prologue to this kind of extraordinary community-based unique sampling opportunity project, whatever you want to call it. Now, Piano Book is currently in, in what I would refer to as pre-production, <coughs> which is basically a, a process of learning and defining. At the end of this uh, film, I'm going to go through uh, that process in greater detail. But let's just jump in back to that prototype winter piano that I sampled in two and a half minutes. I think, you know, it was great, fantastic, it's lovely for a little toy prototype kind of thing but I think we all agree it needs a bit of noise reduction. So where better to go and get some assistance where this is concerned, but here. So we're in the uh, inner womb of Spitfire Audio, in the nutting room. <laughs> the nutting room? Yeah, Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> 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 what an obscure reference. John Jay's given us just a little bit of our time because basically I, 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 I learn, have to relearn how to noise reduce about about one, twice a year and basically <laughs> so I forget so I just thought I'd make a video for me of how to do noise reduction so I don't have to hassle John Jay again but then also share it with you um, as a process that's it's, it's important for samples isn't it? it is, Me yeah. because, because when you're playing one recording it's fine as soon as you start playing a six part <laughs> harmony, you're playing six recordings, so you get six times the noise. Yeah, it's like, uh, I was going like, okay, that, that's like 20 players, Yeah. 20 microphones, one hall, yeah. and that's 40, 40 players, tw yeah. 40 microphones and two halls. <laughs> yeah, the hang gets a bit hissy if you don't, basically. Yeah, and the no uh, noise floor as well, at the bottom, in bottom yeah. and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. what do we use for, like, we do, what's that? I think it's a batch so, thing, don't we? It's a batch process, yeah, and the reason why we use a batch process is because We've got lots of different notes and lots of different signals. Okay. Um, and the software that we use is called RX6 Audio Editor. RX7 now, actually. Okay. RX a bit behind. What we basically do is make recordings of complete silence. So that's an important thing to do when you're sampling something, yeah. is, is to just record, just let... No musicians just, rustling or talking or just passing, six, just yeah. silence. It doesn't need to be massively long, does it? No, not really, kind of. 10 seconds will do for most okay. of the time. Right. This is the room tone, it's what it's normally called, and I'll pull it into RX6. So here we can see all of the different, this is a spectrogram of the signals. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's nothing really going on in there, it's just kind of white noise. So all four gotcha. signals that we're gonna to do today. And then we open this, Thing called batch processing, which is somewhere, I don't know, the shortcuts command B. Set up different jobs down the side. Ah, oh, And cool. then different files to put into each different job. And then we set it all off. So you do different jobs for di basically different microphones? Exactly. Okay, so each right. of the four signals will have a different setup. So we'll start with one, and we want to apply spectral denoise. So here's a list of different things you can do, like Deplosive or change the gain or EQ and stuff, but we'll do stuff to noise or custom settings and we want to see what we're actually doing. So this is the point where it's actually quite important. Okay. This will really affect how it sounds. Okay. Um, and one of the main things is putting the quality best. best. So this is a reduction in dB, which okay. we can normally do around 18 dB off. So what we can do with this plugin is it basically looks at the silence. Needs to be very considerate. Exactly. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, you're ruining my flow. <laughs> yeah. So we take this silence, and it learns it, analyzes it, and works out what's going on, so that it can take that away okay. from the stuff. So okay. it sees the music and it sees what we've learned. I understand. It doesn't take away the music. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we learn that, and then record it for the first signal. So that's the first one, make a few more. And then, so signal two, that was signal one, we just learnt. Signal two, step back, learn it again, slightly different shape, and then record that. Sometimes we'll have, like with hands, Zimmer strings, we had over 20 signals. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great. That's it, took, it took a moment to <laughs> get this set up, that's for sure. So that's learning the noise, noise profiles of 
every different signal that we have. Great. Yeah. So I'm going to switch over to Easy Find and then drag in our folder containing our samples and search for the first signal, which is appended with CA1. Uh, they all are. The reason why we're using Easy Find is because Max Finder search functionality is really naff. Okay. You'll find, you know, 94% of your files, but <laughs> not all of them. And you have a lot of files. Uh, there's quite a few, you know, sometimes 16,000-ish per <laughs> RXing job. Anyway, uh, drag those in, into our input files. So, now we've got all of our files in there, ready to be have this job done to them, and go to noise reduced folder, mm -hmm. process. At the same time, we can start dragging in Scripting stuff. It's great <laughs> it intelligence. Is, this is really good right television. But I think we can, we can understand in principle. We can understand it. exactly in principle that this could be. And then is there a progress bar? Yeah. So you get an individual um, progress thing here. Oh, I Not see. on that one, but here you can see we can sort of chase it going down. Succeeded will be the judge. Succeeded. Of that, really. <laughs> yeah. Thanks ever so much, John Joe. So let's have a go at noise reducing this winter piano that I did in the previous uh, film linked above. Um, my recommendation to people contributing to Piano Book would be to either not noise reduce or if you are, to provide a version that's both noise reduced and one that isn't. Uh, in post-productions, we often find that we need to kind of back out of cul-de-sacs and kind of redo steps and stuff. So to have the raw content, I think, is preferable. So let's try and make this winter piano prototype a little less noisy. Okay, so here's RX7 I've just uh, updated, uh, which is fancy, and I believe we need to go custom settings, view, and then what we need to do is find some noise to learn from. You'll just see there's just a little bit of noise before the actual notes. So I'm just gonna select that, hit learn, and I believe you've got to hit record. So basically what this will do is this module will record these settings. So every time I change something, I need to hit record. And then here we go. We've got the oh, something that RX does, which is really annoying. So if we go to Piano Book 1, there we go. I think that's all. Uh, choose folder. Um, I'm going to do set up a folder called NR. And I'm going to keep the same file name. This is quite important for sample swapping, I think, I believe, both in contact and in EXS. Anyway, so let's uh, process gulp. Excellent. So that's the nr ones there. Right. So basically what I want to do now is replace all of the samples in that original EXS with these new nr ones. And this we call sample swapping. Um, the way you do it with EXS is incredibly inelegant. But basically what I'm going to do is going to move these samples into a new folder, new location rather, and then what will happen is EXS will go, hang on a minute, can't find them, and look again, and then go, oh, wait a sec, I found some kind of duplicate title ones, which ones would you like to use? Okay, going to pen up at one. Okay, and you'll see, here it goes, multiple matches found for file, and instead of going non-NR, it's probably sensed that those, those waveforms look the same, and I'm gonna go NR, so if we just pull in these to compare, let's pull that in, and then let's pull that in. So here's the non-NR, and here's the NR. Excellent, so if we have a little play here. Now one of you spotted a little click up there. Let's get rid of that. And that's just simply a starting point kind of error. Or much more pure and lovely. Okay, so let's just play something that maybe would usually cause a build up in that noise to see if this is kind of bearable. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna sound really quite lovely.
Great, so just a natural amount of kind of background noise there. Not bad considering this is just basically a shed at the end of my garden. As always, I've placed a link to this new Ennard prototype of the winter piano with that corrected note. Thanks for pointing that out. Sorry, I didn't note down your name. I mentioned earlier that we're in pre-production and I welcome you uh, writing to me and sending to me your experiments, but basically, Having done sample libraries with Spitfire Audio for 11 years, we've learned that if you don't scope something, uh, it becomes scopeless. It's fine to have a bit of scope drift, if need be, and very common, but I think you need to know when you're going under or over schedule or under or over budget. So what I'm trying to establish in these next few weeks is what is referred to as an MVP, or a minimum viable product. The way I envisage Piano Book is to be a combination of a very light, vanilla style instruments, i.e. kind of plain pianos, and then the other half of the library is going to be these pianos processed through all sorts of crazy effects units, my modular system, and anything I can lay my hands on to give a really inspiring set of piano-inspired tools. Now, whether vanilla instruments are concerned, I want to have a really big selection of pianos, but I don't want the library to be oppressively huge. So, over the next few weeks, I want to kind of... There's nothing like peering around a, a dog's bum into a camera. Um, I want to kind of establish with you guys and girls, um, you know, what we feel to be an access, acceptable kind of minimum viable product for a vanilla piano. Now, the way I'm thinking of it is you know, these pianos that, that, that do a kind of an all-season piano, do the soft, the loud, the quiet, you can do kind of honky-tonk, you could do mellow ballads, all of that kind of stuff. For me, they're never, they're, they're great, they sound realistic, they're great mock-up tools, but they never really effectively work for the specificity, <laughs> making up words, of the composition you're working on. So the experiment I want to do with Piano Book is to think of a piano sample library like we do a, a detailed professional virtual instrument string library, whereby the different articulations are mapped to different patches. So my hope when developing the MVP, minimum viable product for these vanilla pianos, as this part of Piano Book, is to really establish what these different pianos are, one, good for, so, you know, there's a big honking out tune piano in an awful acoustic down in my house below. What can we use that for? Well, something a little bit more brutish and less personable than, say, for example, a felt piano or a, this winter piano. So what I want to do is try and imagine what a minimum viable product for a piano is if we're going to give it one single kind of use, application. So as I say, still in pre-production, but please do send in anything you have for me. I basically divide my week into kind of creative time and then time for kind of emails and all of that kind of stuff I tend to do on trains and stuff. So if there's a delay with me responding uh, to your direct emails or indeed your comments, uh, I do apologize, but I will get to them all because this is a community project. If you like what I'm doing here, just give us a like, that'll keep me going. Um, and I really appreciate all of your contributions and suggestions. If you haven't subscribed yet, well, there's going to be news of lots of kind of free prototypes coming up, and you too can take part in this interesting project. So hit subscribe if you want to know the next time I put a video up, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Oh, knees, icebox.